I'm Manfred Moore. I'm standing here in Bitforms Gallery. I live in New York since 1980. I was born in Germany many, many years ago. I lived in 20 years in France and in Spain. But since 1980, I work here in New York. So here, Bitforms looked at my work for the last 50 years. What could we show to show your interest in algorithms. Since I started in 1969 writing my first algorithm, it was appropriate to, to call this 50 years of algorithm and art. I went to high school in Germany, I went to art school in Germany, and I got a, a scholarship for a foreign country and I chose at the time to go to Barcelona, to Spain. I inscribed in that art school there, which was called Escuela Manzana, but after one day I never returned. <laughs> That's a different question. But I played music at that time and made paintings at the time and moved uh, two years later to Paris, where I went to the Beaux-Arts and studied there lithography for a while. And then I became independent since then. I do my own thing. <laughs> I always had this problem that to make a good work, you have to try five times to get it good. And that randomness bothered me that I cannot control what I want to do, that I have to be lucky to get a good work. And I compared it because at the same time I was a musician, I made my money with music. I knew I can write down an idea and I can play it whenever I want it. So why couldn't I do in art something similar that I know before I start what I want to do? And lo and behold, I came upon a, a book from a German philosopher, Professor Benze, who talked about art in our time nowadays, which should be more logical, more reasonable, more, not from the stomach, but from the brain. And I thought, that's a good idea. <laughs> but how, how would I do that? So it took me many years to figure out that what I was doing was not logical in itself. It was emotional. And to get logical, I have to think about what I want to do and be able to take it apart in pieces to see how it is built, to, to be reassembled, let's say, in a program, or I can communicate it to somebody, do this and do that. So that's when I was struggling to figure out. My work in the meantime became more and more geometric, but the geometry was still some sort of illusionistic uh, abstraction without content, really. I met Pierre Barbeau which is a French composer who wrote computer music since the late 50s. And he explained to me what programming means, that you write little subroutines with ideas and you put them together and you call them after your logic you want to do, and that creates a, a piece. So he showed me in his music how this works. And I suddenly understood, of course, it's exactly what I have to do. I have to figure out how can I construct something with instructions. Of course, I had to learn then programming, which is Fortran at the time, which was not so easy because there was no school or nothing at the time. So I found a book and I learned it. And luckily, in, in, in the faculty in Vincennes, in the university, we had sort of some friends of mine, we created a group. We had the similar ideas, what can we do with a computer in art? Of course, we had neither computer nor nothing. So we got eventually a computer, but not a drawing machine. And so uh, it was sort of helpless sitting there calculating things you can't do. So I saw at the French television, by luck, a program on the meteorology. The Weather Bureau just got um, and a table traçant, that is a plotter, which draws the weather curves. I said, of course, that, that's what I need. And I got access to the meteorology 
at night, because during the day they had their own things to do. So I worked there for every night for 11 years. There is a certain level of uh, communication which is interesting. And I, like in the meteorology, the, the, the weather scientists, uh, they are all half in the clouds anyway. So they, they have fantastic ideas and we had wonderful dialogues. And I went once a week to the, not to this director, but to some other director in the media. And we discussed all sorts of things and I learned things from them. Like for example, there, there is this uh, function which is called the spleen function, where you can put random numbers together and make a circle out of it. I mean, not a circle, but a, a sort of a closed uh, loop, which they need for their, for their weather, you know. So I, I was very fascinated in, in this idea. So I made drawings, which I think there is one out there, where I connect random points with their function from the weather. Bureau, you know? so, so there's a lot of level of communication. But there's also another very funny level, because when I worked at the meteorology and I used their equipment, especially the plotter, if the plotter doesn't work right, they don't know it, because then the weather is 500 miles bad this way or not. But I saw that something is not right when I told them, listen, the plotter has a problem. So I was a maintenance for free for them, in a sense. So everything went hand in hand. But the computer was a shock to me that was far beyond my knowledge, you know. So, so I only could use the, the, the entrance with the program. I knew what the program does. But the computer itself, I didn't really yet understand. It took me a long time to understand until I, in the year 2000, I built my own computers, you know. But the thing is that it is a collaboration of interests, you know, because if I suddenly want to go to the moon, I, I need different technologies, you know, so I have to look for it. So that was my way at the time to go to the moon. I had to find the, the way to the computer. You know. Art is the most fundamental language which we need to understand the world. Without this, we cannot understand anything. <laughs>